All right. Well, if we have other people come in, I'll let them in. But as it is 502, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And my name is Emily Kelly Joseph. I am the volunteer coordinator and special projects here at Lovely Preservation Hall. And I'm actually downstairs and Paula's upstairs, which is fun. So you get a little different artwork in our backgrounds. Um, when the pandemic kind of kicked into place, we started doing these virtual artist talks here with Susie Nielsen. She's gonna talk a little bit more uh, in the future, but we got together and we've been meeting with artists. This is our third one. And it's great, it really has expanded who is seeing the work, who's, and people are able to talk with the artists and we're getting a lot more in-depth information about the show. So for me personally, it's been a bright spot in the pandemic to have these um, opportunities to speak with the artists. And um, tonight I'm very excited to be welcoming Paul Suggs. He is someone I've known since I was a baby and probably before that. Um, so it's exciting for me to have his work on the walls. And I'm also excited to have Susie Nielsen here. She does so much of the art, uh, visual art that we do here at the hall is thanks to Susie. And we've been working together to um, have me learn more about visual arts and working with that here at the hall. And Susie is gonna be facilitating much of the conversation because she knows a lot more about art than I do, but I'm learning. <laughs> so if you're new to the Zoom format, your best bet is to put on speaker view. That will highlight the person who's speaking. Um, if you're not muted, if you could just go ahead and mute yourself that way, if you hear any background noise that won't take away from the speaker. Uh, if you prefer to see everyone all at once, you can go into gallery view, that's fine. And as I said, I am recording this, and so that will be available on our website in the future. All right, that's enough from me. I'm gonna turn it over to Susie Nielsen. Thank you, Susie. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Emily. Hi, everybody. Hi, Paul Suggs. Hi, Susie um, Nielsen. <laughs> so I'm gonna just, ask Paul some questions, let him talk to us. And then towards the end, you guys, if you have any questions, Emily's going to uh, handle that. So the first question I actually have for you, which isn't on the list, is, oh is there a title for the show? Um, you know, we didn't really come up with a title because it's just paintings from different areas. Like the paintings that are upstairs are, are paintings of Maine and the middle floor or the lobby area, that is paintings of Wellfleet and, you know, the surrounding areas. And the ones downstairs, you can see in the background of Emily's, uh, are uh, paintings from, uh, they're all sepia tone paintings. They're mostly paintings from old photographs that I've been collecting. Uh, that one in the middle behind her, the woman in the flower dress, that was the first one that I did. And since that, I did uh, probably about 12 more of, of those. And it was, you know, I got into that just by uh, trying to do something without color. Uh, and then it just sort of flowed into, uh, I was picking up old photos at, at um, flea markets and things like that. and. Uh, so I started on those and uh, they've evolved. Uh, somebody came in the gallery, Mike May came in the gallery and he had a, uh, a hand colored old photo. I said, I'll try one of those. So he let me use that. And then uh, it, it started out with just cars and cars and, and uh, women. And then it, then somebody came in, Mike Parlanti came in and to the gallery down on Commercial Street, and uh, he had a picture of his grandfather uh, standing next to this nice old Mercury. And uh, the photograph actually, um, to me, uh, I thought it was in Wellfleet. It looked like down by the pier, but he said it wasn't. It was off Cape. So uh, even if you look at the the painting, I think that one's downstairs. Uh, it does look like you're standing in the pier, at the pier. It does. The well, I'm, we're gonna kind of jump into this whole section, I guess, by this topic, but 
it's funny because I did think that all those images, when you guys look at them, they do look, I thought, and they also, because they have such a nostalgic feeling, they were people in your family. And I don't know, Emily, if there's one with a guy uh, at the pier, I think with a sock up. And I thought, oh, that's definitely someone related to Paul Socks. <laughs> Do you no. know what I'm talking about? If you can, yeah, I don't know if anyone can see that closely or not. But um, they do look, they do look like a wealthy thing. And so I did assume that they were part people in your family, but they're not. No, actually, uh, we, we call, and I decided to call it the relative series. Because they're <laughs> relatives. Not mine, but they're somebody's. That's true. And... <clears throat> This was something that you used to do, though, portraits. Is that true? I th read that, I thought. More, more, uh, I, would, I was doing a lot of drawings and portraits, you know, uh, during uh, art school and after art school, before I really got going on the painting. Yeah. Uh, so. so I, I, go ahead. Well, speaking of art school, let's let's start there. Um, so you went to School of Visual Arts in New York for painting? Is that? Well, it was, it was fine arts. Uh, it was fun. I got finished up in fine arts. Uh, so that, you know, it involved printmaking, sculpture, uh, painting, drawing. But there, I, that's where I got my, uh, uh, my discipline of drawing. Uh, we did so much drawing there. It was it was fantastic because I wasn't that I wasn't that good of a drawer back then when I first started. And and uh, you know I remember my first year there, uh, I had uh, an eight hour drawing class and then uh, another four hour drawing class, and then uh, I decided to take an extra class of drawing. So I was just a drawing fool back then. Wow. Straight? Uh, in one day? No, 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 no. Oh. It was like <laughs> four hour another day and, and a four hour another day. But, uh, you know, that, that was the foundation of, of uh, everything I do now happened then, you know. Yeah. And you knew yeah. before art school, obviously, that you wanted to be an artist or that you were doing art as a young kid or... How did you well, get to even go to art school? You know, uh, I had grown up, I had a learning disability and I wasn't really a, a reader. And so I think that pushed me to be more visual. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't read well. And so, you know, I decided to do other stuff and, and I was always creative and, uh, Early on, I remember the neighbor of mine that lived up the street, he was an Italian guy. He, he was an, a painter and he would do plein air painting. And I saw him in the park right across the street from my house. He, he did a painting and then he put horses in it. I went, holy mackerel, you can do that? <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. And, and eventually when I got to art school, a friend of mine from Stanford, uh, he was a friend of mine growing up, we both went to the same we both went to visual arts we started going out plain air painting with that guy and we, who turned out it was his uncle so it was you know what a what a uh, transformation that was to go from you know just a little kid to, he was my idol i guess you know Great. and uh, he painted in a lot of different styles that was yeah. interesting to me too so and then you got to Wellfleet, and had you been doing house painting before? Because you spent a lot of time painting. I did in Connecticut. I, I was working for myself. Uh, I was working for uh, my father-in-law, house painting. But then uh, when I got to Wellfleet, I, I didn't work for a couple of years. I just painted. Uh, and I actually had a little gallery down on Mayo Beach, which was called the Sun Gallery. And uh, at that time I was carving totem poles and sculptures and, uh, and my, my work was really, my painting work was really um, impressionistic, you know, sort of in the, in the vein of uh, 
Vincent Van Gogh, you know, I always liked his work. And so it was, you know, it was, I worked outside, so I worked really fast and uh, I used oil paint and the paint was really thick, you know, and I painted on canvas and, you know, it's a whole different experience to paint outside than to paint in the studio, that's for sure. The, the elements, you know, you have to fight the elements. I remember one time I was over on the Pamet, right on the Truro Wellfleet line there, and I was painting a picture of the, the stream that goes under the river, the Herring River that goes underneath the highway there. And uh, it was before they did all that. It was probably in the 71. And I looked down on my hand, it was black with mosquitoes. And uh, that was, you know, so I became a real wuss after that, you know, after years of painting outside. So that gave that up. But, so now uh, you mostly paint in, indoors? Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while I'll do something outside, but mostly indoors. Because my, my technique is way, way slower now. And, uh, and I'm sorry, go ahead. So about, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago, I decided to, you know, clean up my act somewhat. And uh, so I, even in my painting business, I, I stopped, I changed over to uh, acrylic paint. And uh, it took me, my, in my painting, in my artist's painting, uh, it took me about two years to uh, adapt a style, uh, adapt a technique to uh, uh, mimic the, the look that I had on my oil paintings. So uh, I first started um, doing my underpainting with acrylic and then finishing it with oil. And, and as I became a little bit more familiar with the acrylic, you know, the oil just got less and less and I get used more acrylic. So that's the biggest change, you know, and, and I used to paint, you know, leaning over my painting. So all the, I was breathing like varnish and uh, turpentine and thinner and, you know, and uh, it's a lot on so you. It, yeah, yeah, it's like I came to the conclusion I was killing myself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm going to die soon enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so. you still have quite a bit to do. But um, so I guess you answered my question about how your art's evolved over the years because I, I didn't know you had done sculpture and I had wondered, you know, have you ever done any printmaking or? Oh yeah. yeah. And so you have done that, um, but always come yeah. back to painting. Yeah, yeah. I was doing uh, mono prints and uh, I took a, 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 I had a course and I had a year of printmaking and, in art school. So, uh, you know, I did etchings and stuff like that and lithographs. And then, uh, after I got out of art school, when I moved up here, I went to the Cape Cod conservatory and took a printmaking course there. And that was, that was fun to do. That was a while ago. And, uh, sort of like <clears throat> my time is limited now. So I, I choose to limit myself to, mostly just painting and drawing, uh, not so much sculpture, but, yeah. you know, I, I, it, it's still with me. I, I always, you know, I'm always thinking about doing some sculpture still, so. Yeah. So but, uh, but what is it about painting? We'll see. That, what is it about painting? I mean, you do I, it, what is it about painting in particular? Is it the physical, like, moving of your hand with your mind working? But I mean, you spend a lot of your time with paint. I mean, painting houses. And, and I was just wondering, is there any relationship or do you look at them as two separate things? That's just more just oh, you know, muscle control. It's, uh, you know, there's a, a zone that you can get into, that I get into. I can get into doing, you know, the, the grunt painting or the, or the artist painting. It, it's a zone that uh, I can get to 
you know, like uh, where I'm not thinking about technique. I mean, in both areas, both the, the uh, commercial painting and the, and the artist painting, I've gotten to the point where I don't really have to think about how, how I'm going to do this so that it all flows while I'm doing it, you know. But, uh, you know, there's always a challenge in, in every project, whether it's a, a house project or, or a painting project. There's always something that I try to, to uh, work on to, to, to grow from in yeah. the painting, in the, in the artist painting. There's, there's always something subtle, uh, whether it's, you know, a certain light that I'm trying to capture or uh, the drawing itself. Uh, so and, there's always something. And also, what what is it about light? I mean, mo many artists are paint light for the shapes or, I mean, it just, it exposes so many things to us visually, how light affects things. But looking at your work when I, I went through it again today at the hall and there's a couple of them that just uh you really feel like you're in the place and there's a stillness and i think a lot of the ones that i felt that way about were ones that the light was very prominent so i was just yeah. wondering for you is that what is it about the light or is that just a, a good exercise to get you interested in a in a scene oh. or Oh, I, I, I think that in my paintings, there's, uh, you know, there's, uh, I like the contrast. And when there's like light, I'll even, a lot of the work I have, either the light is in early morning or in the afternoon, so that there's uh, shadows cast and there's a contrast between the light and the other areas of the painting. So, you know, it makes the painting pop. Um, there's a painting over here with a, uh, it's an old farmhouse and uh, it's up in Maine. And I've, I've driven by that farm uh, a number of times. And then one afternoon I went by there and the light was just like hitting the side of the building that just, you know, just caught me, you know. Uh, it just, you know, it defined the whole shape of the whole other, there's like more than one building there. So it, it, it the, the uh, gable end just came this way, and the side of the building came this way and the rest of it pushed back. And, you know, that was, uh, that was an interesting painting to do. And the same with, with water, you know, there's always, you know, the light on, I love painting the light on water, you know, even though it's always moving to try to catch that in the moment. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, there's a painting over there of a lobster boat coming into Korea Harbor where the, the water is coming up onto, the spray is coming up onto the bow of the boat. And yet you can still feel the roll of the, the swell of the water. And that, you know, that's, and there's, you know, certain areas that was in late afternoon and in the, in the foreground, the boats in the foreground and the light, the afternoon lights hitting the pilot house. And in the background, it was misty and, you know, but it wasn't like a foggy misty. It was like a, a greenish, I don't know, it, it was, it's hard to explain, but it really, I took like 10 pictures and that particular one i really enjoyed the the movement and the you know the the whole uh image that the the image of that moment you know and so uh it's it's always nice to share that you know part of the the reason for painting is to share the moment you know that moment that i had and hopefully uh, you might get the beauty of it that I got, you know. So I sure loved it. Well, and that's, so that's the other thing I, I wanted to point out is that you, now that you're not painting outside, you take a bunch of pictures of what you're gonna paint and then some of it is left up to what's etern like internally you're feeling about this place. Right. I mean, 
right? Because you're not there. I mean, you're there. You've been there. You know it in your brain, but. Yeah, but I was there at that moment, you know. That I can remember the moment. And you go back to that. Yeah, it's all about, that's what it's all about. It's about that exact moment. Um, you know, I think it was two weeks ago, I was coming from Mayo Beach, and I was just about at that gallery, the frying pan gallery, and I look over, and the, the sun was just setting, and it hit, the light hit on the side of a garage down behind the, the uh, frying pan gallery. And, and so I kept going and I said, no, I'm going back. So I went back and I took like four or five pictures and that's the painting I'm working on right now. So uh, it's on the easel down at the gallery. Yeah. So it was, that's how it works for me. I'll, I'll just, something will move me that'll take a pic and then I'll take a picture because uh, I couldn't remember all that information yeah. ever. Yeah, well, you, you remember you know, it through a feeling more than in, in your brain, I think, probably. Feeling. Yeah. Remember yeah. The drawing and all that information. Yeah. Right. Well, and it's interesting, though, because your portrait work that you're doing with the sepia is not as contrasty. You know, there's not as much contrast in there. So it seems like a different kind of exercise for you. But. Well, it is because, you know, the 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 cameras weren't as precise right back then you know so everything's a little fuzzy and not so f in focus yeah. although some of the the uh the car the car detail is more contrast you know that's where where the chrome is and the, uh where the chrome meets the body of the car so there's a lot of contrast there but, you know, I enjoy, with those, I also enjoy the surface, trying to, you know, play with the surface of, you know, to get it to look like metal and yeah. to get it to reflect the light that is, you know, in the photo. Well, yeah, and as I said before, it is funny to me because the portraits, they do feel like people that, you know, when I was looking at them, I was thinking, is that person related to Anne, Paul's wife? Or is that that guy with the funny sock has to be related to Paul or the motorcycle? Because don't you ride a motorcycle? So they're, even though they're not your family, there is definitely a relationship for you to those images that they drew you to them, I think. You know? Yeah. Um, the, yeah, I love the, the guy with, you know, the guy with the fish. He's holding the fish. He's got a little pack of, looks like, almost like Tipperillo in his pocket. And then his sock, that that sock has like uh, stripes on it. And it was just like, oh man, that's, you know, he just got off of work, decided he was going to go catch some dinner and have a cigar. And, you know, that, that was my my little story I got from that. And the, the picture is only like this big. You know, the, the original photograph is about this big. Yeah. So. So um, I have one more question before we actually have two questions for you. And before we open it up to everyone else and they're Are they by numbers, is that what you're not going by numbers and they're not going to go anywhere near any of Paul's jokes, if I can help it. Although I would love to end with one of his, but um, one is about um, just art being an artist in general. And I think especially coming from you who, I'm assuming most people know you to some degree um, that's on this call right now. And I, you know, I don't know you all that well, but you're definitely um, a presence in Wellfleet and your art and in, in your, you're always to me, like you always have me looking both ways. Like one minute you're, I'm looking at these beautiful paintings and the next minute you're telling me a funny joke and there's, there's a lot there. And I, I really appreciate that. And I think, um, being an artist has a lot of uh, assumptions with it. And so I wondered if you could think of one of the biggest misconceptions you think people think about being an artist is. Oh, I, I think that people think that, you know, here's a person and here's an artist, but it, it's the same thing. You know, we're all just people and some people, you know, 
uh, have certain disciplines and, and my discipline is, is art, but it's no more important than uh, anybody else, you know, like the, whatever uh, employment or, or desire to, to do something, you know, I just choose to do art. Uh, but I don't think it's like a hierarchy anymore, you know, it's just, you know, uh, it's for me, it's something I love to do. And, uh, you know, it's like, uh, I always say that, um, like if you ride a bicycle, you know, you don't think about you're a bicycle rider. You just get on the bicycle and you ride. And at the end you have, you have ridden, you had, you know, a nice bicycle ride. Well, for me, you know, I start paint and I do a painting and at the end I just so happen to have a painting, but the enjoyment of the whole experience is in doing it, you know, and doing the work and, uh, you know, figuring things out in the work. And, and that's where the art for me is, it's in the doing, you know, the, the immediate, the moment of sitting there and doing it. That's my meditation, you know. Um, and uh, that's the part I enjoy. And, and, and I think that anybody, you know, like I might be able to do it better than somebody else, but anybody can do it. You know, if, right. If, if you work that, that experience of, uh, or practice, you know, yeah. That almost like spiritual experience of, of uh, making whatever it is you make, whether it's art or cookies or right. whatever. It's, it's a skill as well. Yes. And do you have, what do you, what about any kind of inner critic? Does that, doesn't, does a voice ever talk to you and get in the way of your work or it doesn't sound like it does, but. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, a, a long time ago I used to listen to it, but now I, you know, I laugh about it. You know, you suck. No, you're not that bad. You know, this is, a, this is working out, you know, there's always the, you know, the, you got the, you got the two dogs on your shoulder, you know, you got the little, little chihuahua over here and you got the vicious dog over here, the, the negative dog and you got the little chihuahua. And the only way that the chihuahua wins out is you don't feed the other one. So I try not to feed the negative stuff and, you know, in life, you know, I try to take, I've learned to try to take the high road rather than, you know, I can always get, you know, my nature, I want to go down that low road, but I, I try to, you know, stay on a, a balance uh, and by, you know, traveling the higher road. So, you know, there, there is the critic inside, but, you know, I don't try not to pay too much attention to it. And, uh, sometimes it can become comical to to listen to that jerk you know because it, it, he's there but uh, I, you know just stay away would you <laughs> tell him one of your jokes uh, i said just tell him one of your jokes <laughs> the other side of you um yeah. and then my my last question is going back to art school and i had read in the statement on uh at preservation hall that you, you, two of your instructors were very famous artists. Um, yeah. Chuck Close, which I'm not sure if everyone knows who he is. You can Google him, but he's um, does very interesting work, and I'm sure everyone has seen it, whether you know you have or not. And also Malcolm Morley, who I, is very famous, but maybe not as. But there, any anything that um, that was interesting or that you could share that was different, you know, did you, were they famous at the time and, uh, or did you just, were you just drawn to them because you really liked their work only, or I was just kind of curious about the experience with them. Well, it was, it was a great experience because, you know, in, in the art school I went to, that was, um, artists that were showing at that time, uh, both of those guys, they had, uh, work, uh, Malcolm Morley had work at the Whitney, and Chuck Close had, uh, he was um, at the Pace Gallery, which I think he still is on 57th Street. Anyway, the, the other thing is we got to, 
like I remember going, we got invited down to the studios. So you gotta, you know, you gotta, here's a person working that's showing in New York. You know, how inspiring is that? You know, it makes you uh, have a little hope that one day that you could, you know, do the same thing. And it was, uh, you know, I, with Malcolm Morley, I actually got thrown out of this class for being a wise ass. And, and uh, then our final project at, at the end of the year was to paint a self portrait. And I painted a self portrait and it was like almost life size. And uh, he invited me down to the studio and we chatted for a while. And he, he said, you know, it's, it's too bad you're such an asshole because you have, you have a lot of talent. You probably could go. <laughs> and it was, it was, but it was inspiring to, you know, here's a guy that's showing in New York telling you, you know, you, you have possibility, you know, yeah. so that was interesting. And just to, uh, to see the techniques, you know, to see how they were working, what, what they were doing in the studio. It was, it was pretty cool. It was, uh, you know, uh, I was this, this little, uh, uptight kid from Connecticut that went to New York City and, and it was like I had my head cut off and all this stuff came in. It was what a time to be in New York City and during the late sixties and there was so much happening. So so many things happening. And uh it was what a golden opportunity for me to to try to to get all that experience. And I would go to you know, I'd get if I didn't have class, I'd go to the galleries and the museums, and and so I got to see so much art, and you know, uh, and when I was in art school, I tried you know so many different kinds of technical things in in sculpture and in printmaking and in painting. So that was a you know, uh, now it's sort of limit. I limited myself down to what I really want to do. And that's what I do now, you know, it's basically the, the stuff that I do now is, is pretty much what I want to do and, and enjoy doing. Well, we all get to benefit from it. So thank you. Well, I'm, I'm always happy to share it, you know, and talk about it or, you know, it's a, uh, it's my gift that I got that I can give to you. Well, it's nice also because you're, you're very ex, uh, accessible and inclu included. You, you have, um, not included, you make people feel included and there's no exclusion. Um, and it's, it's very nice to, um, to experience that with art because art is such a funny thing. There's, it's a great thing and it's so important, but there's a lot of, different layers to, to being an artist or how people view art or they get nervous about it. And to have someone as welcoming as you and as talented and, and who, you know, who takes it seriously, but doesn't take themselves too seriously really yeah. opens it up for the viewer to, to really appreciate the work. So. Well, it, so much is involved in your own taste. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like being open to, so many other styles you know that's that's something that you know i love to see all types of art you know the, the, there's no one specific kind for me i i love it all you know printmaking abstract you know this year i actually got to do uh, a couple of abstract murals for uh, a house on on uh, slough pond that was interesting so wow very cool. Emily? Thank you. Thank you for that conversation, Susie and Paul. And I know that there are a lot of people on this call that love you, and I'm sure that they have questions for you. So I want to give um, the audience a chance to, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, and you can ask Paul some questions anybody is interested in doing so if not we might have to hear like a pg joke nope oh. 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 can you hear me 
Can you hear me? Ellen, go ahead. All right, yep. so I really, this is so amazing because I, I really tuned in because I, I've known Paul forever and I've never heard him talk about his work before, not without joking. And it was uh, really enlightening and just really powerful, Paul, to hear you, to watch you revisit in your mind some of the work while you're talking about it and what you saw that was right then and there. You saw the movement, you saw the compositions, and you saw the light going this way and the shadow going that way. And we're left with this picture and Susie called it a stillness, which is really true. These pictures, there's like a, at the core of them, there's a stillness that I think is a core inside of you, Paul, the very center now is a stillness. But I also want to say that, um, Susie, your, your questions were fabulous. And I think you have to talk about those, but I, just a piece of history. I got to Wellfleet because of Paul. Um, and his, his wife's brother was someone in my life. And he said, you have to come to this place called Wellfleet on Cape Cod. We were, I was in the Bronx, City Island at the time. And there's this artist who, his name is Paul Suggs, and he has like a beard down to his belt and his ponytail down to his ass and his crack of his ass is always showing and he has one eye going this way and he has one eye going that way and he's standing out in front of his house making totem poles. <laughs> and I said, I gotta go see who that is. And so he brought me up there and, and just wealthily, oh, seeing, meeting Paul, just opened up the door and I didn't, Paul didn't say it, but, and his paintings and he was doing portraits that were very um, expressionistic and distorted in ways that kind of really showed people. And Paul is also a bit of a wild child. But one thing that did happen, Paul, tell me if I'm right, but if there was a fire downtown in 70, I think it was 74, 76, that wiped out half of downtown. And Paul and I both had a lot of our artwork stored up in one top of one of those stores. And Paul lost tons of work. So did I, but he, he lost like profound amount of old work that just doesn't exist now. So. 10 years. But in the basement was my easel and my paint. So I kept paying. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll mute myself. I just have to point Thank out you. that Ellen was sitting like this next to her, that p painting right next to you. It was so fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> That's River Carmen, who also used to live here. And I have to point out before I move on for the other questions that I'm very thankful that Paul got Ellen to be here because if you don't know who Ellen LeBeau is, first of all, she's a fantastic artist. And she's one of the creators of Preservation Hall. So none of us would be here in this Zoom call right now if it wasn't for Ellen and I guess Paul. So this is great. <laughs> and in Marla. <laughs> Deb, I saw you had a hand up if you wanted to say something. Yeah, hi, it's Doug Felix. Um, oh. Hey, Paul. Um, hey. I wonder what your most recent challenge has been. Uh, working with your brother. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, <laughs> of course. No, uh, you know, um, I just finished a commission for a guy in uh, Connecticut that was, uh, he sent me a picture and it was um, one kid with his arm around another kid sitting on the open door of a car, which was a 48 Hudson. And, uh, and the feeling in that painting was fantastic. And it turned out that the two kids were his two uncles mm. and the car was his grandfather's. And uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a challenge to, to do that painting because um, there, wasn't, there wasn't a lot of detail. So, and I didn't know the people, so, you know, but in the end, I think I got, you know, the, I got the feeling of, of the uh, camaraderie of the 
two kids and and their in their joy of the day one kid's face, you know mom's was all blank <laughs> it was it was pretty cool to do and the guy i sent him a picture of it and he he, he loved it so you never know <laughs> that was that was uh my latest little challenge i'll put it on uh, instagram and share it so but it's a cool little it's a cool painting it's about uh probably about 20 by 28 something like that very cool thanks for the question deb does anybody else in the audience have anything they'd like to ask Paul? Candace, did you have a hand up earlier? Yeah. I was curious about going to the studio. Would it, I mean, isn't that interrupting you if you go by? I, I, I put something in the chat like, is it open? No, no, not at all. You know, I, even if I'm painting, I'm, the studio is open on, just on weekends now. And uh, we're we're actually moving over to the depot, uh, back to the depot in January first. Um, <laughs> and Lee's going to have a Lee is going her yoga studio is going to be there, and then we're going to have the gallery next door. Um, anyway, uh, even if I'm painting, I can I can be painting, and somebody comes in, I can put it down and talk. It doesn't. You know it doesn't phase me and then go right back and get right back into the zone where i was that's not not a problem for me okay. i don't know why it is that but that just you know that's just the way it is for me it doesn't inter interruptions won't interrupt my my uh painting at all i love it when people come in thanks so everyone should go visit Paula's gallery. Uh, Dad, AKA Gary, I see that you have your hand up. Hi, Paul. Hey. I remember your uh, impressionist, uh, impressionist era, and you seem to have gone to the more re realism. Is that something you're more comfortable with, or you just, uh, is that something you go back to, or you don't go back to, or how does, how does you switch and, well, you know, even in the re even in the realistic paintings, if you look closely, there's a lot of like there's a painting over here of, of Korea Harbor with all the boats in it, and there's like uh, like a thousand little lines in the water, and it's sort of like instead of the the lines being really fat, they're they're skinny, but they're still it's sort of like impressionistic, but in a uh like a softer way not as intense like not so expressionistic but there's still the lines and in some paintings you know but that one in particular the water any of the water paintings have you know i have to get there's a there's a way that the light hits the water where right next to the light there's a there's dark always so there's a you know there's a light there's a dark and it, and that's how it it becomes like a movement you know seeing that and i can't you know there's a painting here where the water is just flat well this one's pretty flat but there's another lobster boat over there and that water is just that i remember that day it was like a mirror uh you know the boat was there was no no movement in the water it was pretty cool and then the lobster boat over here, like I was talking about it before, it does have a swell and, the, you know, there's a lot of impressionistic lines in it. Uh, so, and it yeah, just, I, I, just evolved that way, you know, it just, yeah, technique just changed, you know, and uh, I wanted to try something different. You know, who knows what I'll be doing in 10 years. Right. Push easies. I think I still see it a little bit in the in your recent uh the photograph um portrait uh paintings 
where there's a little bit of impressionism, I see that in, in the characters and in, in the in mm -hmm. individuals. Um, so I, I can see that. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Good. Thanks, well, I'm glad that you come by, Gary. <laughs> Caroline, Jane, did you have hand up? Hi, Paul. How are you? <clears throat> it's Carol. Carol oh. Ibria. Hi, how are you? <laughs> First of all, when I saw the, the photo of the uh, pictures of, I think you call them the old people, the, um, I, I really thought they were from the Wellfleet Historical Society. If you go through those, the, yep. the pictures there, they really look like they could have taken, been taken right out. And I was thinking of Richmond Bell and his antique cars and how perfect that would be for you. That was the first yeah. thing. And then the, the second thought I had was I, had, I was at the gallery and I was looking at the, um, your main paintings and the Wellfleet paintings. And one of the things that interests me is, is how different places <clears throat> evoke different color palettes. And I was wondering, uh, what you, is that like conscious or unconscious or <laughs> do places have different light? What, what do you think does that? Well, I, I think that the main paintings, they, they have a similar light because, you know, uh, where we are up there is, is right on the water. Mm -hmm. But the thing that changes there is, is the, um, the, where the way the, the, the rocks come down to the shoreline. So, uh, you know, that's the colors that change like the, here the marshes you know the marshes like uh, a lighter shade up there they have this granite rock all around the shoreline and then they have the seaweed that and big tides so there's a lot of dark uh near the water and uh so that's the difference between here and, there. and uh, most of the time when i'm up there is in the fall so Oh, okay. The pictures that I take are in the fall up there that I work from, mostly. So that could be the difference too. The light would change. Yeah. Thank you very much. The, the, yeah, sure. Good question. Thank work. you. Hey, Ms. Carol. Thank you. Hey, and I do see you, but I saw Lou and Paula. I saw your hands up, and then Jane, you're going to be next. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Paul. Nice this is Lou. Um, um, hey, bringing Blue. Boston here. Um, so I just, you know, I love your work. I always have, and um, and I've, you know, been lucky enough to uh, visit you in the studio many times and see exactly what your process is. Back when you were at the Works Gallery um, in the back room painting, and now where you are, you know, you're just sitting right out in the open painting, and it's always wonderful. And you know, I was just curious, Paul, if you could talk to. Um, what determines scale for you? Because one of the things that I really love about your work is the way that you do um, capture that contemplative, peaceful feeling, but you also have a wonderful um, grasp for light and reflection in your work. But there's a variety of scales that you painted and, and it's never been enormous, but like I have a really small little painting of yours and we bought it because it's just, beautiful and, and it seems perfect in its scale. And then recently when I was at the works gallery recently, like, you know, two seasons ago, when I was over at your space, um, there was a painting you had on the wall. I don't remember the name of it, but it was a stand of trees that was very orange and the light was like raking through them. And I remember thinking about how perfectly you'd captured that scene and the scale seemed perfect for capturing that. So I'm just wondering for you as the painter, what dictates the scale that you work in? Well, um, just because uh, w one thing is that I wouldn't mind painting a lot of big paintings, but um, they take up space, they take more time. Uh, you know, if, if I'm trying to sell paintings, uh, the bigger the painting, the bigger the price on the painting. Uh, but it's, it's mostly like this, where, do, if I don't, if I don't 
sell the painting, where the hell do I put them, you know? There's, uh, I have a, um, a storage shed up in, you know, one of those rental storage units in, in Truro, it's got, you know, 50 paintings up there, you know. If I had 50 big paintings, that would be a problem. Uh, yeah, put them on the wall. <laughs> time, I know that I want to do a larger painting, you know. I just know what I want to do, you know. It just it has. I know that to get the feeling I want it has to be a little bit more grand, you know, in size. So, uh, but you know, I'll do a little paintings too, you know, little. Because there's a painting of uh, a sunset looking towards uh, Cadillac Mountain from Scudic Peninsula. That's about this big, but it's a little gem. I, I really enjoyed doing it, and it's a little tiny painting. It's only like you know six inches by twelve inches, but the uh, it just it's an amazing little painting. So you never know. I mean the uh, Size matters sometimes, <laughs> but sometimes it does. But I would like to do some, you know, bigger paintings. Down here, I saw Peter's Peter uh, Watts's paintings, and those are a great size. You know, when when you walk into a room, like just takes over the, you know, just to me. It, you know, walk in that room where Peter's paintings are, and it's like, whoa, this is cool. This is pretty cool. A nice painting. So if anybody has some big walls that they need paint work on, follows your man. Right. James, That's right. You You're right. Paint. Well, thanks for that insight, Paul. Okay, Lou. Jane, Jane, did you have your hand? I did. So, Paul, I was wondering how you manage sunsets. You know how hard it is to catch the color of a sunset when you're taking a photo of the sunset. I rarely am able to replicate the color that's in a sunset, and yet I have a painting of yours that is of the sunset over the flats that looks perfectly like what the color is out there. So tell me, how do you do that? <laughs> it, uh, it's all in the paint by numbers. <laughs> uh, that painting of, that you have, it, you know, um, basically um, it's like thin, transparent layer of layer and layer and layer of, of different colors and it's like, I use a lot of glazes, so you see a lot of light coming through, you see color coming through, you see form coming through, but you can't, I don't just sit there and just nail it right away. It's, it's sort of like, it's a technique that takes a long time to, to get that, like you said, that light. It takes uh, layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of glazes to get that. And uh, you know, it's it's a uh, uh, there's some guesswork in there, you know. I can you know if I don't get it right, I keep going and until it gets to where I want it to be, you know. But uh, it's that's the difference between oil paint and and the acrylics is that you know for me the. the the oil painting that I did was more immediate, where this is, you know, more uh, a process than the, the, the old oil paintings that I did. Wonderful. Where... Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone has one last question? I think we do have time for one more. But I think, I don't know, Susie, should we let him do a joke? <laughs> Mary, do you have your hand up? Yes, hi. Dave. Hi, <laughs> um, I understand you're working with acrylic? Yes, all, all acrylic. And you, did you used to work with oil? I used to work with oil, yeah. Do you prefer acrylic? 
even though you were just saying you worked with oil and it was easier, but working with the acrylic, there's a lot of layering. But do you like the medium of acrylic more than oil? Well, you know, I really always love the smell of the varnish and, the, you know, the plasticity of the paint, of the oil paint. Uh, but, um, you know, like I said before, um, I wanted to get away from the varnish and, and the thinner and, and stuff like that because, uh, you know, it wasn't, it's not healthy for me to breathe that stuff. <clears throat> so I gave it, I gave it, that's one of the reasons why I gave it up. I'm not saying I'll never, but they do make uh, oil paint now that you can wash your brushes with soap and water. So things, you know, things are changing with the, the process. Like of, if you like to work with, um, pardon me? If you like to work with acrylic with like mixed media? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do you like to work with acrylic and mixed media? With like markers or pastels or, or do you just like no, work with acrylic? No, just straight paint. I'm a straight painter. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I do some sort of crafty things though, I'll do a combination of different kind of things. But uh, in the painting, I just do acrylic. Do you like to put in mediums and glaze and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah the, the, I mix my own book. I, I have a medium that I've come to figure out. I like to, it's a mixture of matte medium and gloss medium and water. And um, it's just uh, what I, I like to use it to mix in my paint. And then the surface of the painting itself, there's a, there's a sheen to it that I like. It's not too glossy and it's not too flat. So those are a few little technical things. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Well, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm sure we could talk with Paul forever um, and hear lots of jokes that I would have to cover my ears for. <laughs> so you'll have to email him for that. Um, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who joined us on this call. I did record it, so we'll get it up on the website soon. Paul, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Well, thank, thank you so much, Emily, for hosting and, awesome. and Susie for yeah, always so nice you. to see you. You're both, always, you're both always smiling, I love it. <laughs> That's what we're here for. That's why they pay us the big bucks. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and a safe holiday. And uh, we'll see you for the next virtual artist talk. Bye. Everybody. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Emily.